Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Broke Clintons humiliated after boarding Delta flight, not treated like first class by other passengers. Hillary Clinton is up to something. It seems she may be gearing up for yet another run at world domination and preparing for a 2020 presidential run in what will be her third attempt to get to the White House. In an attempt to appear as just one of the people, Bill and Hillary Clinton were forced to fly with the unwashed masses on a Delta flight bound to an unknown destination. A video clip posted to Twitter caught the shady duo sitting in the first-class section. The clip appears to have been captured across the aisle as others filed down the aisle towards the coach section of the plane. The clip ends as Bill looks up, apparently spotting the camera. Oh, how the mighty have fallen as this is a far cry from traveling in Air Force One, private jets, or even aboard chartered campaign planes. It is interesting to note the Clintons can travel freely, unmolested, on a commercial flight with no security in sight, with no fear of being attacked by conservative critics, or violence of any kind. They were not asked to leave or refuse service in any way. Meanwhile, Trump administration officials are facing daily harassment by emotionally unhinged and sometimes violent leftist progressive activists. Social media is rife with speculation as to just where they might have been traveling, but all parties seem to agree on one thing. The Clintons are definitely up to something. Hillary continues to drop pointed messages attempting to convey a sense of urgency, and they are coming with increasing frequency full of faux outrage at the latest fabricated atrocity committed by President Donald Trump and his administration. Some of the messages ask for money. Yet others urge recipients to participate in various protests. Five such messages have been sent in just the last month alone, touting her super pox role in combating President Trump and his agenda. Written as though they are being sent from the official headquarters of the resistance itself, the messages seize on headline events, such as the current media-created crisis at the southern border. Hillary writes on June 18 under the subject line, horrific stating, This is a moral and humanitarian crisis. Every one of us who has ever held a child in their arms, and every human being with a sense of compassion and decency should be outraged. Then she hearkens back to 2016 proclaiming she warned everyone about President Trump's immigration policies during the campaign. Her intended message is clear. She told America, and America did not listen. Now we are paying the price. Just three short days later on June 21, Hillary was back again. This time with a message about her group, Onward Together and its plan to raise $1 million explaining the funds would be split among organizations working to change border policy including the American Civil Liberties Union and various and sundry immigrant, refugee, Latino and women's groups. Just one day after Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy announced his retirement, Hillary introduced another resistance partner known by the name, Demand Justice. The group promises to protect reproductive rights, voting rights and access to health care by keeping Senate Democrats united in opposition against any and all conservative Trump nominees. Demand Justice is headed up by none other than Hillary's campaign press secretary, Brian Fallon. As the New York Post notes, Fallon's role clues us in as to the exact purpose of Onward Together. The Super PAC was formed in May 2017 and it appears that it is intended to be a 2020 campaign vehicle in waiting for Hillary in her third bid for the White House. The homepage describes the purpose of Onward Together, stating the group is dedicated to advancing the vision that earned nearly 66 million votes in the last election. It seems lack of vision is what kept Hillary out of the White House in the first place. Well, that and she is a lying liar that holds most of America in abject contempt and she would not know the truth if it reached out and shook her hand personally. The New York Post further reveals just why the Democratic Party is locked in a power struggle between its left wing and its radicals dash. With the Democratic Party locked in a battle between its far left wing and its far, far left wing, no single leader has emerged to unite it. Clinton is trying to play that role by being a mother hen to the fledgling activists drawn to politics by their hatred of Trump. With the Democratic Party locked in a battle between its far left wing and its far, far left wing, no single leader has emerged to unite it. Clinton is trying to play that role by being a mother hen to the fledgling activists drawn to politics by their hatred of Trump. If they were active in 2016, most probably supported Bernie Sanders in his primary challenge to Clinton. But by helping to fund them now, she is putting them in her debt for later. Ah, but will she need their support later? Is she really going to make a third run for the White House? Not long ago, I told a group of friends, all liberal Dems, that I believed she was keeping open the possibility of a rematch against Trump, and might already have decided to run. It was unanimous, they were horrified. I would not give her a single cent, one man, formerly a big donor to Clinton, 
said emphatically. Their reasons are no surprise, her moment has passed, she was a terrible candidate and her endless claims of victimhood are tiring rather than inspiring. It's time to find new blood. Those assessments are unassailable and certainly are shared by the 20 or so Dems lining up to take their shot at the nomination. Moreover, there isn't any clamoring for another Clinton run in Hollywood or other leftist hotbeds. They want a new blockbuster, not a sequel to failure. One would think that Hillary would get the message that America is not interested. They have passed twice. No need for a redo. Yet the case can be made that Hillary may actually have a shot at a third time as the charm bid for the White House. Whether she will actually win against President Trump remains to be seen, but I digress. As Michael Goodwin notes Hillary is not to be ignored for the following reasons Tash. First, because there's no clear frontrunner for the nomination 18 months into Trump's presidency, Clinton remains the closest thing to an incumbent. She's also got numerous advantages, from name recognition to campaign experience to an off-the-shelf cabinet, that could give her a head start. Second, a crowded, diverse field diminishes the chances of anyone knocking her off. Recall how Trump outlasted 16 GOP rivals by having a committed core of supporters that grew as the field shrunk. Clinton could be in a similar position, unpopular among many, but also unbeatable by a single opponent. Recall how Trump outlasted 16 GOP rivals by having a committed core of supporters that grew as the field shrunk. Clinton could be in a similar position, unpopular among many, but also unbeatable by a single opponent. Third, looking ahead to the 2020 primaries. She sees no reason to fear the favorite daughters and sons in key blue states. She would almost certainly beat Senator Kamala Harris in California, Senator Cory Booker in New Jersey and Governor Andrew Cuomo in New York. And please, forget Sanders and Joe Biden. Sanders is already 76 and Biden, at 75, has never been a viable candidate for president and still isn't. Fourth, money is not an issue. Some donors will resist Clinton at first but any Dem nominee can count on all the money in the world to run against Trump. To be clear, there are scenarios where Clinton doesn't run. Health reasons, for example, or a younger rival could rocket to the top of the pack and become the party's next Barack Obama. Either way, recurring nightmares of two previous defeats would send her back to wandering through the Chappaqua woods. For now, I am convinced Clinton wants to go for it. Doubters should recall the line about polls who get the presidential itch, there are only two cures, election or death. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.